The floor number was extremely high, so Yan took the elevator up to the designated floor. She held the room card that Fu Xinxing had given her but still rang the doorbell when she arrived. To her surprise, Ah Jiang, the expressionless man, answered the door. This time, he nodded slightly upon seeing her and greeted her with a curt, Ms. Yen. As she entered the room, Yen couldn't help but think that Ah Jiang seemed to be constantly by Fu Xinxing's side, likely serving as his personal bodyguard. Ah Jiang informed her, Mr. Fu is waiting for you in the living room. Yen walked through the hall and spotted Fu Xinxing sitting alone at the bar in the farther part of the living room. He was dressed in a white bathrobe. When he saw her approach, he simply motioned for her to come closer with a crooked finger, commanding, Come here. Without hesitation, she complied, taking a seat on a high chair beside him. She poured herself a glass of wine and boldly asked him, Fu Xinxing, can we have a civilized conversation? He turned his head to look at her, his expression unreadable. After a moment of silence, he sneered, what could a woman like you and I possibly converse about? Since conversation seems challenging, she proposed, how about we play a game? Even a woman like me and her client can engage in games, right? This piqued his interest, and he inquired, what game? She reached for a bottle of wine and explained, it's quite simple. One person asks a question, and the other answers. If you don't dare to tell the truth, you take a shot. Fu Xinxing, intrigued by the idea, challenged her, what do you want to know? Is Fu Xinxing actually Xinjijie? Yen shook her head, her eyes unwavering. I already have the answer to that question. No need to ask you again. Fu Xinxing was even more curious now, and he raised an eyebrow, prompting her to continue, what else do you want to know? She gazed at him and smiled coyly, you don't dare to tell the truth, and you don't dare to drink alcohol. Pouring herself another glass of wine, she teased, is that a yes or a no? Fu Xinxing stared at her inquisitively, how would you know if I'm telling the truth? She looked at him with a hint of vulnerability and self-doubt, lowering her gaze as she replied softly, Fu Xinxing, I trust that you won't deceive a woman over a few drinks. I, trust you. Her words caught him off guard, and he couldn't help but stare at her. After a brief silence, he acquiesced, fine, ask away. Yen still kept her eyes downcast, not meeting his gaze. She asked her first question, what method did you use to send my colleague away, will it harm her? Fu Xinxing hadn't expected this question, and he looked at her with some surprise. He answered, your colleague's husband was caught in a badger game, and he needs her to bring money to secure his release. As for whether it will harm her, well, this time the trap was set under my orders. However, it's not the first time her husband has engaged in such activities. So, would you say this is harming her or helping her? Yen couldn't provide an answer. After a moment of silence, she raised her head and took a shot. He observed her with interest and offered a faint, appreciative smile. Not bad, no hesitation. Thank you, she replied in a hoarse voice. She reached for another glass and asked her next question, your revenge on me, will it harm my family? Fu Xinxing pondered for a moment before responding, it all depends on your performance. As long as you adhere to the rules of our game, I won't touch your family. I don't like playing with large groups. That's reassuring, she replied with a smile, letting out a slow breath. She picked up her glass and downed it once again. She raised her head and asked her third question, our game, when will it end? Unlike the previous questions, Fu Xinxing didn't respond immediately. He stayed quiet until she put her chin in her hand and looked at him expectantly. Finally, he replied, I don't know. Yen was taken aback by his uncertainty, but after a moment, she reached for her third glass with a shaky hand. As she raised the glass to her lips, Fu Xinxing suddenly grabbed it from her, his fingers tightening around the glass. He took the glass away from her and declared coldly, this glass is mine. He lifted the glass to his own lips and took a sip. Yen looked at him with a puzzled expression, and asked, did you lie? He didn't respond but instead frowned slightly, his tone growing colder as he asked, Yen, have you had too much to drink? No, I haven't, she denied, though clearly, the alcohol had begun to affect her. She sat there, swaying slightly, and declared, next question. Next question is, Fu Xinxing, what will it take for you to end this game? His patience seemed to be wearing thin, and he mocked her with a cold laugh, what's the difference between this question and the previous one? Isn't there a difference, she slurred her words, then added, okay, let's change it. What will it take for you to be satisfied with this game? Fu Xinxing appeared increasingly agitated. He pursed his lips and looked at her coldly, refusing to respond. She persisted, oh, still not it, another question. Slumping weakly on the bar, she buried her head and muttered to herself, 
but I just want the answer to this question, Fu Xinqing. I really want to know. I'm about to break, I can't hold on anymore. Now the words I tell myself the most every day are just, don't go crazy, don't go crazy. She continued to speak incoherently to herself, her head down. I have never done anything bad, she continued, her voice shaky, Fu Xinqing, what did I do so wrong to deserve this revenge from you? Oh, I forgot. I did do something wrong. I stopped the car to save an unrelated stranger. As a result, I killed a person. I never even killed a chicken before, but I killed a person with a knife, and then had endless nightmares, all blood whenever I closed my eyes. She laughed hoarsely, but her laughter soon turned into coughing fits. Her body curled up, but she couldn't seem to stop herself. Fu Xinqing didn't know what had come over him, but he reached out and patted her back while mocking her coldly, you really are foolish enough to play this game with such low tolerance. She tried to speak but could only muffle a yell, I'm going to throw up. He froze for a moment before getting up and dragging her to the bathroom, but her legs were so weak that she couldn't even stand. Her body swayed from side to side, and she couldn't walk at all. So, he simply scooped her up, holding her in his arms as he rushed to the bathroom. He saw her retching badly, so he lowered his head to threaten her, if you dare to vomit on me. Before he could finish his words, she had already vomited, a mix of gastric juice and wine all spewed onto his chest. So sorry, she still knew to apologize, and while he was stunned, she struggled off him and ran to the bathroom. She spat a big stain on Fu Xinqing's nightgown. He looked down and frowned in disgust. He took off the nightgown and threw it into the laundry basket, grimacing at her. She was still retching, but she couldn't throw up anything, except for the two glasses of wine and a glass of iced water she had just drank, there was basically nothing else. He took a water bottle and handed it to her, saying indifferently, stop vomiting. Here, have some water to rinse your mouth. The hand that reached out to take the bottle was shaking so badly that she couldn't bring the water to her lips for a long time. He really couldn't stand it anymore, so he bent down and grabbed the bottle, put it in her mouth, feeding her one mouthful at a time until the bottle was emptied. As she fell unconscious in his hands motionlessly, Fu Xinqing glanced at her and couldn't help cursing. He stepped out and grabbed her from under the armpit with both hands to lift her from the ground. He carried her into the shower and put her on the bench against the wall. He peeled off her clothes in a few moves, took off the shower head, and gave her a shower. Being suddenly drenched with water, she finally had some reaction, whimpering and dodging subconsciously. However, he held her head and impatiently scolded, don't move, sit still. He even sprayed the shower directly on her face. In addition, she was only half conscious, so she unknowingly choked on the water and started coughing her lungs out, frightening him a little. He squatted down and looked at her nervously, you okay? Her voice was hoarse like a broken gong, but the first sentence she said when she opened her mouth was, Shinjijia, I don't owe you anything. I have never done anything wrong to you. He froze, and suddenly felt dumbfounded. He laughed at her loudly, reached out and patted her face, saying, Yen, aren't you embarrassed to play this game with such low alcohol tolerance? He paused, raised his eyebrows slightly, and asked her, you aren't faking being drunk, are you? With tears, she repeated over and over again, Shinjijia, I don't owe you, Shinjijia, I don't owe you. He hadn't heard someone call his name for an unknown amount of time. Unconsciously, it made him a little absent-minded, he listened to her in a daze. Moments later, he rinsed the foam on her body. The water temperature was high, and the glass-enclosed bathroom was foggy. Being splashed by the hot water, her face gradually turned blood red, and her slightly curled, long raven hair curled up even more with the water. It was actually a very tempting picture, but for some reason, he had no desire, just pursed the corners of his lips, rinsed the foam for her silently, and haphazardly wiped her wet hair. Then he wrapped her in a bath towel and hugged her out of the bathroom. She was half asleep, half awake, letting him hold her, until he threw her on the bed, and let out a low, muffled cry. He stood on the edge of the bed and looked at her for a while, then went around to the other side of the bed and lay down. He stared blankly for a while with his eyes open. He suddenly turned over to her side, reaching out to hug her. He lowered his head and wanted to bite her lips, but seeing her frowning and sleeping so soundly, he lost interest. He let go of her. Turning over and laying back, he resumed staring at the roof in a daze, until just before sleep with his consciousness getting a little blurry, he suddenly felt that the stupidest thing he did today was to let this woman drink. Her thoughts were still a bit fuzzy from the alcohol, but she was determined to keep her composure. Finally, she realized that the man beside her was asleep, his breathing deep and even. Early the next morning, 
the sun had barely cast its first rays, Fu Xinxing was abruptly awakened by a deafening thud. His immediate instinct was to reach under his pillow, searching for the reassurance of his gun. However, much to his surprise, his grip found nothing but emptiness. Panic surged through him as he realized that Yen was nowhere to be found on the bed. Stunned by this unexpected turn of events, he leaned over to peek on the other side of the bed. To his amusement and bewilderment, there she was, one hand followed by one foot, attempting to climb back onto the bed in a rather peculiar manner. She seemed to be struggling to reclaim her place on the bed. His amusement got the better of him, and he couldn't help but burst into hearty laughter, his eyes locked onto her with amusement. Startled by his laughter, Yen looked up, her eyes wide, and her body wrapped in a bath towel, albeit one that was no longer effectively concealing her form. Avoiding his gaze, she scanned the room, her focus clearly on locating her clothes. Fu Xinxing, half reclined on the bed, observed her in silence, amusement dancing in his eyes. However, he couldn't bear to prolong her embarrassment and offered a light reminder, your clothes are in the bathroom. Her reaction was immediate as she flinched, snatched the bath towel, and darted into the bathroom, where she stood still for a moment, seemingly lost in thought. Unable to contain his curiosity, Fu Xinxing entered the bathroom, only to find Yen squatting on the floor, her gaze fixed blankly on her wet clothes strewn across the ground. Surveying her soaked attire, he arched an eyebrow, brushing off her dilemma with a casual tone, just ask someone to wash it. Defiantly, she retorted, then what will I wear now? Her words slipped out before she could marshal her eloquence, leaving her momentarily tongue-tied. She clenched her lips, lowered her head, and reached for her underwear, intending to put it on despite its damp and chilly state. With a nonchalant flick of his toes, Fu Xinxing kicked her underwear out of her hand. A wry smile played on his lips as he teased her, why, I generously helped you shower, but it seems I've inadvertently rinsed out a complaint. Yan's voice quivered slightly as she argued, but I can't go out in just a towel. Observing her attempt to retrieve her damp clothes, Fu Xinxing appeared slightly irritated. He seized her, half lifting her to the sink, and leaned in closer. His fingers delicately brushed her collarbone as he questioned her in a chilly tone, Yen, didn't you come here to show weakness? Why do you remain so defiant? She inhaled deeply, her chest heaving visibly. After a prolonged silence, she tentatively rested her head on his shoulder, her voice trembling as she spoke, Yes, I came here to reveal my vulnerability. I concede defeat. I implore you, Fu Xinxing, show me mercy. Please, have pity on me. Tell me that one day I can escape this torment, or at least find solace in death. For a while, silence hung in the air, and Fu Xinxing remained unresponsive, his contemplative gaze locked onto her. Eventually, his palm glided along the curve of her neck, cradling her face, urging her to lift her head and receive his kiss. She yielded, and their lips met in a fervent embrace. Her body trembled slightly, but she offered no resistance, parting her lips to admit his passionate advance. Just as Fu Xinxing was about to reach for her towel, she seized his wrist, pleading softly, don't. I'm truly not feeling well today, please, understand. In response, he withdrew, releasing her, his voice hoarse as he remarked, not feeling well, then why did you attempt to seduce me? Yen struggled to respond, her tongue failing her as embarrassment washed over her. She could only gaze at him, wide-eyed and mortified. His derisive chuckle filled the room, and he turned to attend to his own morning routine, brushing his teeth and washing up. Moments later, his mouth filled with foamy toothpaste, he turned to her with a sly grin and commented, if you were to call room service now, perhaps your clothes would be dried by nine o'clock. Startled, Yen abandoned her toothbrush, letting it fall, and hastily rushed out of the bathroom. When Fu Xinxing emerged from the bathroom after his own preparations, he was met with an unexpected sight. Yen, who had previously been draped in a short bath towel, now swathed herself in a broad and thin blanket, tightly wrapped around her form. She glanced up at him, her voice barely above a whisper, I'm running late. Could you please call A Jiang to go downstairs, check if any stores are open, and buy me something to wear? Fu Xinxing raised an incredulous eyebrow, his surprise evident as he inquired, Yen, do you think I'm your lover, or are you attempting to provoke a reaction? Flushed with embarrassment, Yen bit her lip, her voice trembling as she struggled to find the right words. Nevertheless, she resolved herself, released her tight grasp on the blanket, and strode out of the room with determination. Leaving Fu Xinxing to watch her with an amused grin as he quipped, are you planning to go out like that? The blanket belongs to this room. I suspect the staff won't permit you to parade around wearing it. Her voice, taut as a pulled string, responded, Fu Xinxing, did you intend to humiliate me from the start? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm not afraid. I willingly brought myself to your doorstep for this very humiliation. 
With a strained smile that was more pitiable than joyous, she curled the corners of her mouth, let go of the blanket she had clung to so tightly, and walked out of the room, completely nude. Ignoring his orders to stop, she continued her departure. Seeing her ignore his commands, Fu Xinxing couldn't contain his frustration. He quickly advanced, grabbing her wrist in an attempt to halt her, his voice sharp and demanding, I told you to stop. Tears welled up in her eyes, but her stubborn resolve remained unbroken. She met his icy gaze with a frigid inquiry, Mr. Fu, what else do you want? In silence, Fu Xinxing fixed her with a chilling stare, his eyes narrowing as if contemplating his next move. After a tense moment, he took off the half-worn shirt he was wearing without uttering a word and flung it directly at her face. His voice carried a stern command as he ordered her, put it on. Yen hesitated for a brief moment, caught between defiance and compliance, but eventually, she decided to wear the shirt he had offered. She found herself demanding, and pants. Fu Xinxing's patience had clearly worn thin, and he shot her a withering glare before begrudgingly handing her a pair of pants. With a mocking sneer, he taunted her, can you even manage to wear them with those short legs of yours? Yen, being the resourceful woman she was, quickly devised a solution. She knotted the oversized shirt around her waist, allowing it to serve as a makeshift skirt, and rolled up the pants neatly, deliberately revealing her slender white ankles. Fu Xinxing made no further comments as she left, his gaze lingering on her exposed ankles. With a smirk, he casually remarked, they're still exposed. Startled and self-conscious, Yen instinctively covered her chest with her arms, shooting him an indignant glare before storming out of the room, leaving Fu Xinxing behind, a triumphant yet contemplative smile gracing his lips. Yen walked calmly, her steps measured and her composure unwavering. She even encountered two students as she exited the room, but her demeanor remained composed. She nodded gently in acknowledgement, her tranquility a stark contrast to the turmoil within her. This serene state continued until she reached her room. Just outside, she noticed a young girl, the same one who had previously asked Fu Xinxing for his autograph. A sense of worry washed over Yen, and she exclaimed, I told you that I would call you. She approached the little girl, who hesitantly inquired, Teacher Yen, do you know who I am? To which Yen replied, Your officer Chen's daughter. Surprise flickered in the girl's eyes, but she obediently followed Yen inside the room. With a hint of uncertainty, she continued, My name is Chen Hegua, and Chen Jingyan was my father. He died in a car accident on October 21st. I found a note when I was sorting out his belongings. Tell me, teacher, you wrote this to my dad, right? Yen nodded in affirmation, saying, yes. The girl then presented the note, her voice trembling with a mixture of emotions. This is the only item my dad left behind, and my grandma said that this note is essential for finding the culprit. So, I want to know exactly why you gave this to him. Handing the note to Yen, the girl continued, the car that killed my dad was owned by a subsidiary company of the Fu Group, and then I found this note. Thus, I realized that my dad's death may be a murder case. Yen, puzzled yet cautious, questioned the girl, why would you trust me at all, why would you come seeking me? Chen Hegua gazed at Yen and explained, I showed my grandma the photo taken yesterday, she said to trust you. Yen was taken aback by the girl's perceptiveness but couldn't help but sneer at herself. I really want to pay your grandma a visit once I have the chance. With that, Yen decided to confide in the young girl, recounting everything that had transpired in her life over the past two months. She concluded, Chen Hegua, go back and tell your grandma everything I told you. If she thinks we can be partners, then go to the English Department of H University to find me, and we will decide on what to do next. Remember, don't call me, Fu Xinxing is monitoring my phone. Chen Hegua left quietly, and Yen wasted no time. She rushed to the bathroom, took a cold shower, and dried herself thoroughly, all while trying to regain her composure in the face of mounting challenges. As she returned to the front desk, the staff, noticing her worn appearance, expressed their concern. One of them asked, Are you sick? Why do you look so awful? Yen forced a smile and replied, It's nothing. She then dialed a number, thinking she was calling Yuanza. However, it was Fu Xinxing who picked up the phone. Before he could speak, Yen urgently whispered, Yuanza. Her voice grew hoarser as she continued, I'm so uncomfortable. My head hurts, and I'm a little dizzy. I think I have a cold. Can you bring me some medicine? Her voice dwindled, and she suddenly fell to the ground with a loud thud, the impact reverberating through the room. Her colleagues rushed over, concerned, and anxiously asked, Teacher Yen, Teacher Yen, what's wrong? Yen's eyes remained tightly closed, and there was no response. But from the phone clenched tightly in Fu Xinxing's hand, a low voice inquired, He Yen, He Yen. When Yen eventually woke up, 
she found herself in a hospital room, and the first person she saw was Yuenza, leaning on a chair beside her bed. Her throat was parched, making it difficult to speak, but she managed a feeble question, Yuenza. He quickly leaned over, his relief evident, and began a barrage of questions. You're awake, how are you, do you feel better, do you want to drink water? Yen mustered a weak laugh and retorted, which one do you want me to answer first? Her dry lips prompted her to request, I want water. Yuenza obliged, pouring water for her, but he couldn't help but express his concern. Why don't you care for your body? Not only have you caught a serious cold, but your body is also very weak. How many meals have you missed? Ignoring Yuenza's nagging, Yen focused on her immediate concerns and inquired, Do I need to be hospitalized? How many days do I have to stay in the hospital? Yuenza replied, The doctor said it depends on the situation, so you'll have to stay with me for three days like a good girl, then we can talk. When mother he visited her daughter in the hospital, she was a mix of distress and anger. She critiqued Yan's every fault from head to heel, and finally, she chastised, Is this how you've been preparing for pregnancy? Look at how, you've stressed yourself to this state, do you want to upset your mother? He Yan felt a sharp pain in her heart at the mention of pregnancy. Since Fu Xinqing had never taken protective measures, she had resorted to secretly taking long-term contraceptives to avoid harming her body. Yan's gaze wandered to the phone by her bedside, her thoughts drifting. Since making that fateful call last night, there had been no news from Fu Xinqing. On the fourth day, Yen was discharged from the hospital and returned home. As she entered the house, she received a call from Fu Xinqing. She covered the microphone and whispered to Yuenza, it's the dean, go and put the things down first, I'll answer the call. Yen couldn't contain her curiosity and apprehension as she answered Fu Xinqing's call. With a careful tone, she inquired, what did you call me for? Her nervousness seemed to amuse him, and he responded with a hint of mockery, I want you to fly halfway across the world to attend a party with me.